Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 51 of the platform specific series of my Z80 programming tutorials. We're going to be looking at the Game Boy again this week, and we're going to be looking at some extra features of the tile map that we didn't look at last time, specifically the window, which is a limited extra tile map, and also the scrolling of the tile map. The first thing to point out is before anyone gets pedantic, these, the Game Boy isn't a true Z80. It's sometimes referred to as the GBZ80 because it's got some features missing, but it's almost the same, so we put it in the Z80 tutorials. Okay, well let's start by having a look at what we're going to be covering. Well, we're going to be covering the window. Now this is an extra layer. Let's just see it in action. It'd be easier to view than explain. The window is effectively a second tile map, which is very limited in its ability. It's effectively always locked to the bottom right hand corner of the screen and it can be defined to go up to a specific position. So for the example in this case, I've made it cover the whole of the bottom quarter of the screen here and this would be useful for a sort of score and lives and maybe some items we're holding or something like that but we can make it fill any amount of the screen so we could have it fill the entire right hand side of the screen or half the screen or the entire screen but it is always docked to the bottom right hand side and it's never partially transparent so you can't use it for a second true layer and you can't make it scroll you also can't make it dock to the top left of the screen although you can do some tricks and basically turn the window off halfway down the screen so you could make it look like it was docked to the top right with some tricks but the window is useful for pausing your game showing your inventory or just having a fixed part of the screen at the bottom that doesn't scroll with our platformer or whatever scrolling game so that's what the first thing we're going to be looking at we're going to be looking at how to make the regular tile map scroll and how to move the window if we need to do that and then we're going to go on further and we're going to look at interrupts and some tricks we can do with the interrupts so for these we're going to need a set of registers and you can see a summary of them here but we're going to go through each one in detail as we see how things work okay so what's the example doing here well it's very straightforward essentially the window is a second tile map and we can define this tile map as being at a different memory position our basic tile map is at hexadecimal 9800 the windows tile map we can map to 9c00 and that's what we're doing here so this is just some filling code here we're basically filling the 9800 range here with these slash symbols and then we're filling the window range with these dot symbols and I've got an alternate print string routine just to show a message to the window here just to make things clear but this is just test code this isn't really what we're covering today now enabling the window is very straightforward all we need to do is we need to set bit 6 of FF40 that will define the memory address of the window because we don't want the window to show the same data as the regular tile map because that wouldn't make much sense and then we just need to turn it on with bit 5 so we just set those two of FF40 to do that then we need to define a position and we do this with FF4A for the Y position and then FF4B for the X position here and I'm setting it to the far left effectively covering the entire bottom of the screen but if I change this to 67 and if I run this again you'll now see we're just covering up to roughly the middle point here as I say we can cover any amount of the screen but it's always docked to the bottom right unless we get tricky now what I can also do though is if I change this to zero you can now see the windows covering the entire right hand side and if I change this one to seven it's now covering the entire screen so that would be a way of pausing and showing a pause message without changing our background if that's what we needed to do so the window's got a few features there but as I say it is rather limited in that it's always docked to the right hand side of the screen so that's our first test now we just discussed showing graphics to the tile map and we've looked at sprites now but most games platformer games at least are going to want to have some scrolling of the tile map and we never covered how to do that now we can scroll the tile map in a very easy way all we need to do is change the register at ff42 that's the y position of the, of the tile map and ff43 is the x position so all i've done here is very simple loop we're just pausing and we're altering the x and y position of the tile map and then for an added bonus test we're changing the position of that window so if we just fire this up we'll see both the tile map and the window moving so you can see that the tile map is scrolling and it's scrolling diagonally because i'm setting FF42 and FF43 simultaneously and the window is gradually eating its way into the tile map here but then when it gets to the top it's going to eventually loop around there we go and it will come back later on so you can see very straightforward to scroll the tile map and obviously this tile map is super super crude but there's no 
difference between showing a bunch of slashes and showing a detailed scene. You can see everything's moving just fine. That's all we need to do. So using the tile map and the window are pretty simple once we understand the limitations of the window. So that's the first thing I wanted to cover with you. Now, the other one is a bit interesting. Now, I said originally, because I thought it was true, that it was not possible to show a different tile in every single position of the screen. And I said this based on my own reading of the documentation, a few failed tests where I tried to break the rules, and also playing a lot of Game Boy games, and I was really unable to find any that broke the rule and made every single tile on the screen unique. So I assumed it was actually impossible, but it seems like I'm actually, I was actually incorrect and you can do it. And the way you do this is with a trick. Now, the Game Boy actually has two possible sources for tile data for the screen tile map. Now, the tile map can either be at memory addresses 8000 to 8FFF, just under 9000, or 8800 to 97FF here. And rather oddly, the tile numbers are numbered differently if you use the 8800 range, they're officially numbered minus 128 to plus 127, whereas if they're at the regular 8000 range, they are from 80 to 255 as we use normally. So effectively this will mean that tile 0 with, is at hexadecimal 9000 in this range, which is actually quite handy for us. You see, what we're going to do is we're going to try to show the Chibi Akuma's graphic and we're going to split it into two parts and then we're going to use an interrupt so that when the screen is drawing at this position, we're going to swap the memory address of the tile map so we're going to use almost all of the first 255 tiles to draw this part. Then we're going to use almost all of that extra 128 to draw this part. The user will see a full graphic that's using all of the tiles, but we're actually breaking the 255 tile limit of the original Game Boy. The Game Boy Color wouldn't need to do this. The Game Boy Color can do 512 tiles, but this is something that the Game Boy can do if we're willing to do this trick. Now, here's the original image here, and what you have to do is you have to split it up around this point and save it as two separate banks of tiles. Now, the first one, this pink area, will effectively be tiles numbered 0 to 239, a total of 240 tiles, and the second third will be tiles 0 to 119, effectively 120 tiles. We're going to define these as two separate banks, load them into our memory, and then we're going to switch during the screen draw. So let's see that in action. So here you can see we've got the Game Boy image and it looks pretty good. You can see there's actually a slight flickering here, which is the interrupt malfunctioning maybe. Maybe my timing's slightly out, but you can see basically it works. Now, it doesn't look too exciting there, but if I turn off some of the code, you'll see what's happening. And run again, we'll see what happens. Well, now you can see that the top part of the image is the same, but the bottom half of the image is now a duplicate of the top half because we're no longer changing that tile bank source two-thirds of the way down the screen. So we're, we're not actually doing the change anymore and the image is now wrong because the image is now limited to the 256 tiles. So we're having to use some interrupts. Well, what interrupts are we using? Well, we're using two. There's one interrupt that we will want to use for starters and that's the V blank. This occurs at the start of the screen draw or at the end if you want to think of it that way. So that will be where we turn to our default bank for the first 240 tiles of the draw. What we then want to do is we want to switch to the alternate bank and we want to do that at a specific line number and the line number is 96. We then want to switch to the second tile bank for the remaining 120 tiles. And that's exactly what we're doing here and it's actually not that difficult to do once you understand it. Now our image file I've split into two parts. I just cropped the image and exported into two chunks here so you can see them just as two separate files here. And we need to load them into memory. The first one, the larger of the two, is loaded into hexadecimal 8000. That's around 240 tiles. The second one is loaded at hexadecimal 9000, because if you remember, that tile bank goes from minus 128 to 127. So tile zero is quite conveniently at 9000 here. So we're just loading into there. That's the second part for the lower third. And then what we need to do is we need to fill the screen areas with our tiles. Because defining the tiles isn't enough, we need to actually show the tiles onto the screen. So we're defining the first set of tiles here, starting from zero, and we're filling in effectively this purple part here. And then the second one, starting from zero again, because, because as I said, the second bank goes from minus 128 for some reason, and so we're just filling that from zero again there, and that will do things for us quite nicely. 
Now that's defining the tiles, but of course we do need to actually set up the interrupt handlers to do our job. So we need to set a few things. We need to turn on VBlank, but we also need to be able to detect the line change. And this is a function within the LCD stat interrupt. Interrupts, if you don't know, are exactly what they sound like. The processor is being interrupted and a task is occurring at a specific point when the hardware requests it. So we're requesting that the hardware interrupt our processor on VBlank and also on what's known as LCD stat. And we define that we want the LCD stat to cause an LYC interrupt. Now this is a line compare and we're comparing to line 96. What it means line long and short is that we're saying when the LCD stat interrupt occurs, check the LYC status, cause the LYC interrupt and cause that interrupt on line 96, which is defined by FF45 here. So we're using these three together to cause our second interrupt on the line number, which is what we need to change the graphics at the right point. Now, how do we define these interrupt handlers? Well, these are actually defined at specific memory points within our header. Hexadecimal 40 is the VBlank interrupt you can see just here. And hexadecimal 48 is the LCD status interrupt. And so I've defined some labels here that are going to jump and do the work for me. And you can see them just down here. So all of that was a bit complicated, but essentially the quadruple F address here turns the interrupts on. FF41 enables the LYC interrupt. And 45 defines the line that the LYC interrupt occurs on. So then we've got our two functions here. And we are altering FF40 here. And I'll tell you something that I didn't realize at first, but um, we can't write all of the bits of this because it will cause the screen to flicker. What we need to do is use the set and reset commands rather than writing a new value to these addresses. So that seems to be the best way of doing it. So we're setting bit four here, and that effectively sets the first bank of background tiles, a text decimal 8,000. And then we're resetting it here during the LCD stat, which will occur at line 96. And this is where we set to hexadecimal 8,800, which effectively is using our 9,000 tiles we defined just here. Now, of course, if I change this to the wrong number, if I change this to 36, the tile change will occur too quickly. And now when I run things, you can see that the tiles are getting messed up here. We're using some of the correct tiles here because of the negation, but it is messed up. Although actually that flickering has stopped there. So maybe that is the better way to do things. If we change it to 82, maybe that would work better. Yeah, maybe it does. Anyway, we'll leave it at 96 just to um, have it at the exact point that we technically need to change things. So anyway, that's how we can use the VBank interrupt and the LCD stat interrupt to do a very simple task of changing the background tiles. But we can use that LCD stat interrupt in another way very easily. What we can do is we can do the same thing with the window code and turn the window off halfway down the screen. And that's how we can have our window covering the top right hand side of the corner rather than the bottom right when it is actually technically locked to the bottom right. We would just set the window to cover the entire right hand side of the screen and then turn it off when the LCD stat interrupt occurred and turn it back, back on in the VBlank. So there we go. We've had a bit of an introduction to the interrupts and also the window and a few new tricks with the tile map. So I hope you found this interesting. I think this is um, something that I didn't really have a full grasp of when I started programming the Game Boy, but I'm quite glad I know about it now and I've had a lot of fun making this and it was nice to see the Chibi Akuma screen showing on the old Game Boy. And of course, all of this works just fine on the Game Boy Color. This isn't limited to the regular Game Boy, but as I say, the Game Boy Color is capable of 512 tires, so there's easier ways of doing this if you're not trying to maintain support with the original Game Boy. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please like and subscribe, and I've got lots of other Game Boy content on this channel, so you know, have a look around and see if there's anything else that interests you. Anyway, thanks for watching today, and goodbye.